Ibu Mu'amaroh and Ibu Dwi Haryanti. And uh, before uh, I start my presentation, I will I will let you know that uh, actually we are still uh, having a big project, and this presentation is one of our big project. Is one part of our big project. So uh, let me share the screen first. Okay, can everybody? see yes it's clearly seen okay okay so the the title of our paper is error analysis of descriptive paragraphs by university students of indonesia a case study by viracah mukti ibu maamaro and ibu dwi haryanti uh, we are come from uh, universitas muhammadiyah surakarta so uh Let's move to the introduction of our paper. Uh, the basis for learning a language is broadly related to components of the target language itself, namely vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, which is the basis for mastering language skills. So according to Levin, uh, there are still problems of student uh, in Indonesia. The students are afraid to write because uh, because they are afraid of being criticized by other students or by other uh, friends or lecturers. So uh, it causes, uh, it makes them have so little English vocabulary that they, uh, it is motivated by students who generally have little enthusiasm for writing assignment because they find it difficult to make a writing because they have uh, less vocabulary, they have a, a big problem with grammar and so on and so on. So uh, actually there are a lot of, a lot of research, uh, a lot of study that uh, is done by other researchers, other scholars such as In 2015, students still have problems regarding grammar and punctuation. And then Nair and we 2018 found that students still encounter many errors in grammar and sentence structure. And then al uh, 2015 find that students still have many errors in mechanical problems such as spelling. Toba, uh, and Nur and Sanu in 2019 in Indonesia added uh, that students encounter several problems in writing, not only vocabulary, grammar, but also mechanic coher coherence and paragraph of the paragraphs. And for uh, the method, we use in our paper is descriptive qualitative method and the data uh, source is all English sentences uh, written by students of international class, especially civil engineering. So uh, we collected uh, about 26 uh, paper from uh, international class, especially civil engineering. And then the technique uh, of collecting data, uh, we are collecting the data from the content uh, organization and vocabulary languages and mechanic analysis. And for the technique of analyzing the data, uh, we identify, we classify, we calculate uh, the composition of error in writing or test result by using uh, the theory of Cohen and Coffin. 2003. And these are the findings that we got from uh, students of University of. So, uh, according to Cohen and Coffin, there are uh, four score. Uh, score one is uh, indicate that. Uh, the student's writing is poor, and then uh, score two is indicate that student's uh, score is 
uh, fairly poor. And then score three is indicate that students' work is in average. And then uh, score four is indicated that students' work is uh, good to excellent. So after uh, having, after doing a research uh, of international students in U Universitas Muhammadiyah Surakarta, mm -hmm. we found that uh, they are uh, less in uh, the lowest. The lowest score is in language use because they are uh, they do a lot of error in 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 tenses. They do a lot of error in making uh, the the passive and the active voice, and then, and then they are uh, they do a lot of error in conjunction and conjunction conjunction transition preposition and so on and so forth, and then uh, after that they have also uh, many errors in mechanical problem such as uh, spelling such as capitalization uh, punctuation and so on and so forth uh, actually there are a lot of example that we have take we have taken from the students work so uh, but we only show you one example only so these are the content analysis that we got from the students work so these are the percentage of student score from content an analysis so actually there are four uh, score uh, for the for the blue one uh, for the blue one is is poor and then for the orange one is fairly poor and then for the gray one is in average and and for the yellow one is uh, is good to excellent so uh, the so we can take a look at the content analysis there are 46 percent of students uh, have have uh, average average content an analysis and then there are 37 percent of students have good content analysis and then uh, there are 20 23 of students have uh, fairly poor fairly poor and these are uh, one example of the student original work so uh, uh, this uh, we think that this uh, paragraph is this sentence is too long it's it's too long uh, we can know that the uh, what is oh, what is called uh, yeah uh, this the sentence is too long uh, and we think that it can be simplified and sometimes uh, the idea the idea of students is uh, is uh, good but they don't have a long sentences to a long sentences to uh, to, what is it? to explain to explain more in detail and then next for the organization so uh, 50 50 percent of uh, students of civil engineering uh, have average uh, score of organization aspect and then 40, 46% of students of civil engineering have poor, fairly poor, fairly poor uh, analysis of organization, and then only 4% uh, that is uh, good, that is good to excellent. So these are uh, the example taken from student fan uh, from the original work. So. Uh, yeah, we think that the, this organization is good, but it will be better if the students uh, have connecting signs such as therefore, such as moreover, thus, or however, and so on and so forth. And then for the vocabulary, uh, there are uh, 70, 
57 57% of students uh, have average vocabulary aspect and there are 34% of students have fairly poor vocabulary aspect and and there are only 8% uh, who have uh, good to excellent aspect vocabulary aspect and these are the example of their vocabulary you have one so, more minute ibu vira okay okay uh, it is taken from student 14 what i know about my Matia is one is a Islamic education and then for myself it should be for me Muhammadiyah is already attached to me and then for the language use there are uh, a lot of students have problem in 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 deliberating tenses and then tenses punctuate uh, no, tenses and then transition preposition and so on and so forth and for the mechanic, there are a lot of students who have error in in capitalization, in spelling, in punctuation, in punctuation. And for the conclusion, writing descriptive paragraph in is writing a skill in English that can foster students' creative ideas. Besides, it is also a form for student to express opinion about the matter which is represented by the, the theme of English according to the lecture. And then the test result obtained from the analysis of the collected data shows that writing of descriptive paragraph students is above average. And then judging from aspect of writing, a good descriptive paragraph, the analysis of content potentiation and vocabulary aspect is quite good. While the error or mistake that many students make are in the language use and mechanical aspect. And for the situation, it is necessary to provide sufficient practice hours for English courses so that the students can master uh, English skill, especially writing. And then this, the approach that needs to be considered in strategy or technique of teaching mechanic for, from English uh, so that uh, the absorb of material by student can be maximized and then there is a need to for a better material development so that it that's it our uh, presentation okay thank you ibu vira uh, bapak ibu uh, please keep your questions uh, uh, to the end of this parallel session okay i will i would like to have the second presenters ibu selasmianti Samir, to present the paper entitled The Interpretation of Billboards Advertised in Indonesia and Malaysia. Okay, Ibu Sulasmianti, the floor is yours. We, you still have 10 to 12 minutes. Thank you. Ibu Fira, maybe you can like uh, stop uh, your share screen. Okay, let's see. Okay, so now Ibu Sulasmianti. Ibu Sulasmianti, now it's your time to present the paper. Ibu Sulasmianti, we cannot hear your voice. Make sure you are muted, uh, unmuted yourself first. Okay, sorry. Okay. 
We can see your slides. But it can. Cannot be moved. Okay. 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 Uh, our paper under the title with the interpretation of billboards advertised in Indonesia and Malaysia, a semiotic analysis. And then next. Uh, about the abstract, the purpose of this study was to make an interpretation of the billboards advertised in Malaysia and Indonesia. The method of this study it is a qualitative research approach, and then the object of this study were billboards that advertised or implemented in Malaysia and Indonesia. And then by uh, collecting the data, after that we can uh, find out, investigate, about the semantic analysis and then at the result we can compare the both of billboards in Malaysia and Indonesia to find out the similarities and the differ difference of the billboards in uh, Malaysia and Indonesia. It's about uh, interaction. The first is a product or an event need to be advertised in order to promote it to the target or the audience. It is called an advertisement. It can be through images, text, or comp compound of both of them for delivering the message. The company or the agency should be a creative to make an, a good advertisement to compete with the other companies and gain the success. Next, there are some media of advertising such as indoor media, outdoor media, online media, offline media and etc. Our paper focuses on outdoor media. Outdoor media is all the advertisement that can be seen by the customer when they are actively out, outside of the home. There are some examples of uh, outdoor media such as billboards, banner, posters, a wall of buildings, bus panel and etc. Next, when we talk about the outdoor media, the, film, the most familiar is billboard, because billboard is one of the greatest methods to solicit community attention. A billboard is a big and large outdoor advertising media, which is usually found in area like in alongside or the roads of the city. According to Taylor Frank and Bang in 2006, Billboard has been considered as an effective and noticeable advertising medium, especially when the advertiser intends to introduce a new product. Next, about the semantic analysis. Semantic analysis is a study about signs and how the system of those signs make a meaning. In addition, uh, semantic also can be defined as the interpretation about the signs. It refers to how meaning are made by the people by in influenced by cultural practices through linguistic and non-linguistic ways. And then the most uh, founder of the semantic analysis is Ferdinand Saussure that uh, identified identify the semantic is knowledge that study about the sign and as the part of social life. He, state, he stated that linguistic as a part of life because, and then he found out that sign as the combination of signifier and signified. And then signified is what uh, the, we can see literally in physical, uh, really exists, and then signifier what that we have in mind. Okay, in our paper, we we take Barthes theory that take in deep in uh, from the uh, Saussure theories by adding uh, the theory of uh, connotation and denotation. So uh, 
According to Roland Jerome Berthes, the semantic is not only to analyze the signifier and the signified, but also about the relationship which bound both of them. And then we can see the formula of Roland Berthes theory in this uh, table. This is uh, signifier and signified will make denotative sign, and then from that will uh, make or create the connotative signifier method. Okay, this study use qualitative approach. The data it is uh, it are it, it were the billboards from uh, Malaysia and Indonesia. The billboard in Malaysia, which consists of some types of billboards, are compared with billboards in Indonesia, and the result of the comparison and the analysis in analysis by semantic analysis will find out the similarities and the difference between the billboards implemented in Malaysia and the billboard implemented in Indonesia. Okay, about the finding. The first is about the semantic of billboards used in Malaysia. There are 30 Malaysian billboards which are analyzed by using semantic analysis by Barthes theory and then the billboards consist of political billboards, educational billboards, medical billboards, promotion sale billboards, bring and full billboards, and household appliance billboards. And the distribution of the finding we can see in the table. For political billboard, there are three. For educational billboard, there are three. And then for medical billboard, there are three also. And promotion sale billboard, there are three. And for drink and full billboard, there are 12. And the last is about the household appliance billboard, there are 11. So the total is 30 billboards. This is the sample of the semantic analysis about the billboard. So we, we find out about the verbal sign, non-verbal sign, and then we give the denotative sign and connotative analysis. Okay, the billboard used in Malaysia, we can see from three aspects. The first is the placement. Based on the data, all of Malaysian billboards are put in the visible area where the, where the pedestrians and drivers pass to. And the second is design. All the billboards use background colors based on the basic color of the product or the event they are involved. For instance, a billboard uses a red color because the background, as, as its background because the character color of the product namely Coca-Cola is red. So the billboard use background is red too. And then next is about the agent or the model. The using of agent or famous people in billboards in Malaysia can be found in food billboards, drink billboards, and household appliance billboards. And most of promotion sale billboards in Malaysia do not use people in their billboards, only use some sentences and the event or the headline of the public notice. Okay, the second is semantic uh, billboards used in Indonesia. Uh, same with the in Malaysian billboards. There are 30 Indonesian billboards which are analyzed by using semantic analysis. And then, uh, the distribution, the billboards consist of some billboards, same as the Malaysian billboards, but Indonesia, we find banks, even billboards, and music, even billboards as the addition. From the data we find, we can uh, find out that uh, political billboard in Indonesia, we can find four billboards, educational billboard, there are five, medical billboard, there are three, Promotion sale billboard, there are three, and drink and full billboard, there are seven. Household appliance billboard, there are six. And bank even billboard, there are two. And only one music even billboard. Okay, this is the sample of a semantic analysis of billboard in Indonesia. We find out the verbal sign, and then the second is non-verbal sign, and then we give the signified and signifier or denotative, denotative and connotation analysis. And then 
the billboard used in Indonesia, we can see also from the three aspects before. The first is placement. Same as the billboard of uh, Malaysia, all of the Indonesian billboards are located in visible area where many people we can can see them clearly. And the design, we found one case that political billboards are not always designed with official style. For example, we found that uh, billboard number two in is in Indonesia. We found that it is designed with a trendy style that follow the development or the uh, hot headline in the society. For example, in the picture, Jokowi, we, he used uh, Dylan, Dylan style in the in his uh, political billboards. And then the second is agent. The using of famous people can be a phone. Uh, in promotion sale billboards and then uh, food billboards and billboards from uh, Indonesia it's not uh, uh, are same with the uh, billboard in Malaysia by using the Asian or the famous uh, people from Indonesia okay the second is uh, problem is the similarities and differences between semiotic of billboards in Malaysia and Indonesia. For the similarities. You have only one minute left. Okay. Uh, you can see. Okay, we directly go to in conclusion. Uh, the first is billboards that use in Malaysia and Indonesia have meanings and message for community or people. And then the second, the similarities of billboard between Malaysia and Indonesia can be seen from the placement of the public notices, the using of background color follows the characteristics of the character of the product or the event, and the using of clothes of the model in the billboards. And the last is about the differences of billboard between Malaysia and Indonesia can be seen from the using of the model or public figures in the billboards, and then the sentence structure or the grammar that used in the sentence in the billboard or public notices. Okay, I think that's all of our uh, pre presentation. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Ibu. Okay, the next presenters will be Bapak Muhammad Rifki, who will present uh, his paper entitled Imaginative Recreation in Teaching English Literature. Okay, thank you, Pak Yes, thank you, Bu Alif. And I'm sorry, we have to, I have to wait for the Azan recitation. Well, thank you very much for the time given to me, and I'd like to welcome you all, the uh, attendee, uh, for uh, yeah, to attend our presentation here in room two for the parallel session. Uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Muhammad Rifki. I am a doctorate student here in at uh, UNES, postgraduate UNES, Universitas Negeri Semarang. Uh, let me sh share. Yeah, let me share my uh, presentation. <clears throat> well, here uh, the the title of 
my a paper here that I will present is Imaginative Recreation in Teaching English Literature. Uh, here, my, uh, this is the report of the preliminary research. And now I'm conducting research in uh, related to imaginative recreation in the English, in English teaching in the EFL, EFL context. I teach uh, at Dian Nuswantoro, uh, Universitas Dian Nuswantoro here in Semarang also. And uh, I conducted the research, yeah, the, this preliminary, the pre preliminary research uh, at my campus. And my supervisors, uh, uh, Prof. Yan and Ibu Wuli, and then uh, also Prof. Warsono. Uh, let us continue the to the background. Well, as we know that uh, teaching English, yeah, especially related to literature, in if FL context is not that interesting, it's not that for certain students. Yeah, for, probably I can say that for most of the students, uh, it is not interesting, especially when we talk about. Uh, poetry, because what we are what we are going when I'm going to present here is related to uh, teaching poetry. Well, this is the condition, and so but teacher of course cannot be yeah cannot give up yeah I should not give up for uh, for this situation or condition. In uh, during my class. Yeah, during my class, especially in poetry, the students are not really interested in the class and they get bored, the class boring, uh, because uh, they, they think that learning poetry is not easy, yeah? Especially uh, because poetry, uh, uh, poetry, yeah? meaning of poetry in, a, in two levels, denotative and connotative. Yeah, uh, facing the situation, of course, we are teachers should not give up on, on this situation. So uh, I, um, I explore yeah, the possibilities, yeah, the possibility of the possibilities in teaching, in my teaching. <clears throat> uh, and then this, yeah, this is also related or connected to a certain approach in literary, in literary studies, yeah, reader response, reader response theory. It is um, a very, uh, it is one of the uh, approaches usually applied in literary studies. But I'm here in the study. In this study, I applied I applied this approach to uh, in terms of learning English. Yeah, not uh, merely yeah, not merely teaching the contents of literature, uh, <clears throat> the content of literary work. Yeah, why they why they consider poetry is is difficult. Why the students consider poetry is difficult because uh, as I said that the, the, uh, they have difficulties in finding meaning in terms of denotative and connotative meaning. And they also, because the poetry, as we know that poetry have, uh, poetry uses, yeah? Poetry uses, uh, sometimes uses a rare word or archaic word, yeah? The words that we are not familiar with. And so it is a challenging thing. It is a challenging situation. Yeah, to make the student uh, explore, to make the students, uh, or to attract the students. And both yeah, learning literature and also learning English. <clears throat> to have the enjoyable way in learning poetry or learning literary works in general. 
Well, the research question here is how does imaginative recreation work in developing students' comprehension and appreciation of English poetry? <clears throat> well, um, next we come to the review of the related literature, but I don't want to uh, explain explain uh, much yeah on the review of literature but i'd like to <clears throat> uh on, only to explain you yeah, only to explain the way i respond yeah i need to respond theory work that's it is not uh based only on the text but you focus on the focus on the the process of reading yeah there is that is why sometime or other scholars or a certain, a certain scholars say that this is not a kind of theory this is a kind of reading method yeah yeah once again that the this approach emphasizes on the process of reading yeah the process of reading because yeah the text according to the scholars or the supporters of this uh, theory say that the text does not have meaning after it is read uh, it is read by the by the readers so where the meaning lies where the meaning lies it is not uh, according to them it is not in on the text but it is on the reader so this is the uh this uh research based uh, on so uh, there are some other considerations here that uh, literary texts can provide personal social intellectual and linguistic and enrichment then uh, combining ELT with literary text can extend the opportunities to learn to read and to read to learn. Yeah, and then uh, at the end of the process, they write to express what they has learned or that what they has read. Yeah, this is a contrast construction between the text and readers. This is a reader response theory. And let us go on to the imaginative recreation. Yeah, imaginative recreation. It is the development. Yeah, in, in further study, uh, the, it is uh, it first uh, found by Strata or Leslie Strata, Wiki Dixon, Wikinson, and Dixon. Yeah. It is uh, in imaginative recreation. It's a creative process of recreating. So after the uh, after the students or the learners are given certain texts and then they are obliged, they are assigned to uh, to recreate a text. They are to recreate a text. A text can be a part of literary, literary text. <clears throat> in such a way that helps learner to expand their understanding. As we know that we cannot respond to something, uh, to a, a certain thing, if we do not understand. When someone asks you something, yeah, when, uh, <clears throat> when you don't know, when you don't have any experience about something then, and then you uh, assign, you, uh, uh, you ask by your teacher to, to express uh, uh, then to respond something, of course, you cannot give any, uh, any response, any uh, expected response. <clears throat> so uh, reading here, yeah, our creative process of uh, recreating a text after or happen after the reader or the learners has given a certain text and then they can experience the text and then recreate explore the meaning 
Yeah, now this is the process of uh, the process of imaginative recreation, starting from reading, and then at the same time, is when we read, of course, we uh, the reader as readers have also analyze the text, even though we do not have uh, we do not do the written analysis, yeah, what per what analysis, but what we what uh, what is going on is that. When we are reading, we also analyze the text and then writing uh, the character's profile. Yeah, if it is in the short story, yeah, or the speaker, in the if it is in the in poetry, and then reading notification. Yeah. So we are, are we ask the students to uh, have a notification. Yeah, uh, notes, some notes, uh, creating, creating or writing, and then here. Uh, start to create or write something. Probably uh, they uh, they focus on a small part of the text. Yeah, it is okay. And then planning through uh, what kind of what kind of writing they they can create or they can do. And then uh, picking a genre. And then the last is seven uh, in number seven is editing the newly imaginative recreation text. This is the process in general. <clears throat> well, uh, sorry, uh, Rifki, you still have only one minute left. Sorry? You only have one minute left. One minute, okay. Yeah. Now we are going to findings, yeah. Well, based on the, and the analysis, the, the, the students can produce new text, newly text, yeah, new text. The presentation is different. Uh, what I mean by presentation is about diction, stanza, and then the meaning exploration, yeah, feeling of loss, yeah, because here the poetry here, the elegy for my father, who is not there, is talking about a uh, concern about the, uh, the the loss of the the speaker's loss of his father's pass away, passing away, and then uh, these are the students' response here, yeah, the students' writing, yeah. Yeah, it is the, the the presentation is really different, but the sense the the sense of meaning uh, uh, the the meaning or the sense of loss are there in their poem. Yeah, so I only present three here, and then the last is conclusion is that the students can creatively respond to the given literary text or poem, especially poem here, and create their own poem. Yeah, more interesting. The class become more interesting and motivating too uh, during the uh, class process. Thank you very much for your attention and Ibu Arif. Thank you, Baba. Okay, uh, we're going to invite the last uh, presenter, Ibu Norchibe and Baba Alfred Snay, uh, to present their paper entitled Speech Act used in Nathandale Nathan Ceremony. Okay. I don't know how to read it correctly, sorry. Yeah, that's my neighbor. <laughs> okay. Wait for a moment, we are going to share the materials. Yeah, we can see your share screen. Yeah, uh, a moment, please, Ibu. Trying to share it. We are trying to share it. Okay. Stop saying the book. Um, 
I think you exit from the reading. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's visible now. Maybe you don't need to share screen. Maybe just you just uh, make the slide speaker. Uh, if you find it difficult to make it a uh, slideshow. I mean, like uh, the slideshow, maybe yeah. you have trouble with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can just uh, make it bigger. Yeah. Uh, wait a moment. Uh, we are trying. Okay, can can I help you something? Uh, that's fine. Uh, you can do that. You can share your screen. Yeah, we are trying. We are trying. Very sorry for this. Sorry for this inconvenience. <laughs> Yeah. Mm, can we start, just start right yes. away while looking for the serving? Okay, no problem. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll have to start first. Yeah. Um, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for the time given to us to present our material. Yeah. Under the title speech act used in Natane Dale ceremony. For your information, Natanedale itself is a kind of uh, pre proposal ceremony done by society in Samoa Island, yeah, in East Nusa Tenggara Province. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, this kind of investigation is done by Ibu Norci B and I myself as co author, Alfred Snipe. And we are from Atawacana Christian University, Kupang, East Nusa Tenggara Province. So let's see a little bit about the background of this, this kind of investigation. That in, yeah, yeah, as we know that in traditional life, oral communication plays an important role. In East Nusa Tenggara, particularly, traditional oral communication itself still carried out in areas where traditional uh, practices are still maintained. One of the areas is Samau Island, where people still believe and maintain the tradition, the, the traditions in terms of traditional ceremony. And one of the traditions that is still maintained by them is uh, what is called as Natane Dale itself. Uh, yeah, and let's see a little bit about the profile of this island. Uh, there are at least two ethnics living in Samau Island. Uh, in Samau Island, the first one, the first ethnic, is called as Helongnis, uh, who are the natives, and the Rotanese as the non-natives. And yeah, in this investigation, 
there are two research problems that are trying to be yeah, found out by the writers, by the investigators. Number one is, uh, what are the functions of speech act used in Natani Dale, Dale ceremony? And the second one is, what is the dominant function of speech act used in Natani Dale ceremony? Of course, when we are talking about uh, speech acts, then we need to have some uh, theories or uh, yeah, theories. That's why we have a theoretical framework here. We used the theory of you in 1996 about the functions of speech act, which is uh, in which this kind of theory divided the function of speech acts itself in five types. Yeah, number one is called as expressive function. Number two is com uh, commissive function. Number three is directive function. Number four is representative function. And number five is declarative function. And yeah, for the method and the bindings will be explained more, more by, uh, by Ibu Noti. Okay, so let me continue our uh materials that's relating to Natana Dalek ceremony, especially about the function. Um, in this study, this is a descriptive uh, qualitative study. And then uh, what we have done in doing the research is uh, we used to Manahelo. Manahelo means that the spokesman that takes the roles in the ceremony. Because in the ceremony, not all the participants there can speak in that ceremony, only the manahelo. So uh, there are two uh, manahelo taken as the uh, informants for this research that we use interview to get the data. And then based on uh, uh, what I have uh, stated by the manahelo, then uh, uh, we have the transcriptions of their text. And then uh, after we analyze the result shows that there are only four types of functions that's used by the manahelo or the spokesman in Natana Dalek ceremony. Well, uh, we start from the first functions that is expressive. So in, in expressive functions, there are uh, three, uh, actually three parts of uh, sentences or utterances that stated by the spokesman in this uh, ceremony. But then uh, here I only use one that is Ami Huke Makasi Dado, means that we would like to say thank you very much. So this function is thanking to uh, the girl family that uh, it's a big thank for the, fam uh, the family that they receive this, uh, the men's uh, family to be there. And the next uh, functions, that is commissive. In commissive functions, uh, this one is the dominant one, actually, because there are seven utterances that showing that uh, related to commissive functions. Uh, the example here is KFI means that he will come to this family tomorrow. It's a kind of the functions of speech act showing that uh, uh, the man or the family from the man's side promised that their uh, 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 boys are, are going to uh, see the family tomorrow. And the next... Uh, functions is directive functions. So uh, in directive functions, uh, the speech act used to order or commanding or requesting uh, the speaker uh, using that one to order or commanding the listener to do something. So here, uh, the utterances used by the manahelo or the spokesman, the uh, example such, uh, such as Sipo Mala Auhalangaria. So means that please listen to my information. It's a kind of 
uh, commenting or uh, ordering the listener to listen to their uh, what they are going to say. And next is uh, next functions of speak act that used in in Nathane Dale ceremony that is uh, representatives functions. So in representatives. Uh, we found that uh, the utterances that used by the Manahelo in this one is uh, the examples that say that Ami Liki Mala Lama Nene means that we are listening to your information. This one is as uh, the rest representatives to the uh, the listener, and uh, then based on those uh, functions that. Uh, we found that uh, the dominant function of speech act that's used in in Natane Dalek ceremony is committee functions that we found that uh, there are seven uh, utterances that we found in that uh, ceremony that used by the spokesman or the speaker in that event, while the, the rest functions only four or three functions that appear in that ceremony. And as, as the suggestions for this uh, uh, research is, this one could be used, or uh, the people, uh, I mean, we mean that the local have to maintain this uh, even as one of the cultural heritage that we have in Indonesia. And they also have to share the information all over the world so everyone can know that we have a lot of uh, culture that is different one another but it's interesting to be in Switzerland. So I think that's all from us and we say thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Ibu Nurchibe and Baba Alfred Snay. Okay, now we would like to invite questions to our presenters. You can type uh, the question on the chat. Uh, there is a question already coming for one of our presenters. Um, maybe if you have other questions, you can type it and I'll read it for you. Okay, the first question come, uh, come from Ibu Isi to Parivki. The question is, how would you know that the student's response in the form of creative recreation is original? Okay. Uh, I can uh, answer it directly, Bu Alif? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Ibu Isi, for the questions. Well, uh, originality, we concern about the students' origin originality in, in writing uh, and also in giving response. Yeah, we, don't, we do not only concern on, on this, but every, every kind of writing, yeah? Let's see the uh, thesis writing or the scripty. Yeah, we concern about this. <clears throat> yeah, and we. Uh, I also very. I'm also very careful in 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 this case. And early in the beginning, uh, starting from yeah, uh, when uh, in the in the in the beginning of the semester, I always warn the students not to. Plagiarism, yeah, not to do plagiarism, yeah, not to copy and paste others, uh, others' works, yeah. To do this, uh, we use Turnitin, yeah, because uh, by using Turnitin, is it is very easy to to trace or to track the uh, the writing, the students' writing. And from my uh, my the, from the tracing of the students uh, the students writing, it is uh, proven that uh, <clears throat> that uh, the students writings are original, because probably I also I always warn them, and they uh, do not dare to do this yet to do uh, to plagiarize the other other others works. I think that's all, Bu uh, Ibu Arif. Okay, thank you. I think uh, that answers basic questions. Yeah, uh, answer basic questions. Okay, thank you, Papa. Okay, the, the, uh, the next question is for Ibu Fira Chayamukti from Ibu Sulasmianti. After you find the errors in the student's writing, 
um, what is the most problem faced by the students in their writing? And what solution can be given to the students to minimize the errors? Okay, Bufira. Okay, thank you, Ibu Sulasmiati Samir, for the question. So, uh, for uh, the most problem facing by student uh, is in the language use. Yes, yeah, students are facing uh, a lot of error in grammar, in in grammar, in grammar, and then what else? What else? Transition, preposition and conjunction and i think how to minimize uh to fix the error uh we need to motivate them to to practice to practice more uh on grammar to practice more on transition preposition and so on and so forth thank you is that answering your question yeah thank you Okay, uh, is there any other question? I, uh, okay, I'm sorry that I think we are running out of time right now. And uh, thank you for the presenters for sharing the, the result of your research uh, that they are really interesting. And um, to end this uh, parallel session, I would like to inform you that uh, you will have like one hour break you may leave the room, but after that, we expect you to return to the to the Zoom uh, at one sharp at one o'clock sharp. Uh, sorry, one o'clock to have uh, this the third plenary session. Okay. Uh, thank you, Baba Ibu, for thank joining you. this thank you. Uh, session. Okay. Thank see you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Balif. Thank you, Balif. You're welcome. You may leave the room and have a break. So you're, you are required to come back at one because you're going to have a plenary session with Dr. Pergeshe. And please do not leave um, the room, yeah? Please leave the breakout room and please go back to the main room, okay? Just switch off your video uh, uh, during a break, okay? Amen. Well, okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. It's really nice uh, presentation and discussion about your research project. So thank you, everyone. You can leave uh, the breakout room to the main room and you will have a break in 50 minutes and you're required to come back at one to join the plenary session. Okay. Thank you. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, ma'am.